What's going on, Washington Commanders family, fans that aren't of the Commanders, and everybody tuning in? It's your boy Rio, and we're back with the latest and greatest on the Ramble on Rio YouTube channel. Got a group chat, live stream, training camp special tonight. I got my boys pulling up my boy Marshall, Zach, Alex, Tay Todd, and Jalen. You know, the gang. This episode is brought to you by Washington on the Daily on Instagram. Make sure you give them a follow, and if you're going to do your sports bet and do it with Bet, bet us sports book and casinos and make sure y'all get a question in for the panel tonight because we're doing at the end of the show we're going to be giving away a commander's mini helmet to somebody in the chat tonight so make sure you shoot us a question and let us know you entered and you want the helmet i'm about to cue my guys in we're about to start getting to it first up making his group chat debut my boy Marshall Warm, aka at EST Command on Twitter. Welcome to the show, Marshall. Rio, what's up? What's going on, big dog? How you feel right now, man? Good. Ready to talk some football? Ready for football to actually begin? I'm tired of talking about Marvel like Twitter and <laughs> people people fighting to the death over stupid stuff. Let's let's talk actual football. Let's talk dots and burning some corners here in a few weeks. I know, man. Like, and for those people that don't know, what is Marlboro like Twitter? When you say that, oh, what do you mean? Oh my god! Oh my god! They're probably in this group chat thing now, with the questions riled up. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marlboro like Twitter are the people that will show up and fight to the death over the Redskins name that's been dead and gone for two years now. They take it personal. They get angry. They just set up camp. In your mentions for hours and days at a time, and <laughs> I honestly don't know where Marble Light Twitter came from, but one of them in particular was getting on my nerves, and it just seemed to fit, so we just went with it. All right, man, it's time to <laughs> it's time to get the actual football. It's time to accept the W. It's time to accept the new name and get to it. And I got my boy Pascal. He about to, I'm about to check him in in a second. We got my boy Jalen in the building, bleeding BNG. What's good, my dog? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you fine. What's good with you, man? What's up, bro? What's up, bro? What's up, yeah. How y'all feeling, man? I'm doing all right, man. Going through the dog days of the summer. These days. We almost there, man. We almost there. We at the home stretch right now, man. These days are flying by. <laughs> I got on my training camp shirt, though. It's hey, it's hey. It's I'm, on my, I'm on my early 2000s right now. I got my shirt on backwards, bro. I'm feeling like Nelly right now. We got my boy at Burgundy Bones, who always keeps it real. My boy Zach in the building was good. What's up, fellas? How y'all doing? I'm doing I'm lovely, good, man. How you feel? Good, man. I'm good. Just got back from vacation, so uh, adjusting to reality. <laughs> now, now, make sure y'all got echo cancellation on in the settings or whatever, but yeah, man. We lit right now. We got four. We got some Pascal here, but I'm waiting until he shows up to his chair because right now he got an empty seat right now. <laughs> Man, are y'all ready to talk about actual football finally? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I hate the entire month of July for this whole reason. I hate every single individual day in July uh, because it's the last of the dog day month. It feels like it takes six months for it to end. I'm ready. I'm definitely ready. I'm ready to see. I, I'm ready to talk about actual football things. Like I'm, we're, we're, like we're. I'm so finished with the whole colors on the uniform. They messed this up. They messed that up, bro. Uh, just show me Wentz throwing bombs in training camp, and show me Jamin Davis actually looking effective this year. <laughs> I'm ready, ready, patches, ready for man. training camp, but it does feel like we were just in Richmond. Like this year did fly by. If I'm being honest with you. Yeah, the name changed for like it was two weeks ago. Facts. Oh, yeah, man. Hey, somebody got the echo on. When the set is in the audio joint, hit echo cancellation. I can definitely hear that joint echo. And let me see what's good in the chat right now. Right. Mine's on. Yeah, I just checked mine as well. Right. Made sure that um the volume is down, too, on your uh, My game. Yeah. speakers. Oh, yeah, because somebody joined echo and let me turn this robot out this year. Let me check the chat and see what's going on over here. We got Freddie Lee checking in. Reporting for duty. What else we got? Yo, this echo is blowing me. Let me hold up. Yeah, mine is definitely on. 
Pascal, what's going on, my guy? What's up? What's up? How you feel, man? It's been a minute. It's been way too long. Doing good, man. What's up, Marshall, Zach, Jalen? What's going on, guys? I'm fix my camera every time somebody come in. My head. <laughs> <laughs> we got a full house tonight. We only waiting for two more. Alex, we already know Alex probably taking a nap right now. <laughs> yeah. Hold up. I'm trying to see where this echo is coming from right now. That joint blowing the shit out of me. Hold up. You. All right, but let's just get to it, though. We can start the convo up. We can get to it. Compared to last season's training camp, what feels differently about this year? Now, somebody might um, follow. Uh, <laughs> you good? You good? I hear yeah, I'm good. Yeah, somebody. Yeah. I mean, first off, first it, off, it seems like we're actually focused on football and not what's the name going to be or I wonder what the mascot's going to be or anything else. It's, it seems like there's a clear direction, so that feels a little different. All right, Jalen. Can you hear me? I'm, I'm trying to make sure it's not my mic. You yeah, hear me yeah, I hear you. I hear you perfectly. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um. So, honestly, um, the difference is that I'm more confident about our offense than the defense. Um, last year, going into training camp, I thought the defense was, you know, going to be our bread and the butter. That was going to be our identity uh, for the team. But I feel like completely opposite this time. Let's go around. I think that we um, have the potential um, to have a very special offense, which I didn't see um, necessarily last year with Ryan Fitzpatrick or Taylor Heineke. Um, so my my confidence in the offense is at an all-time high, and it's a complete um, 180 from what it was last year. What a time it is when we can say that we're more confident in the offense than the defense. Welcome to the chat, Alex and Tay. What's going, What's going on, guys? What's going on? What's going on? Checking All in right. for duty. How y'all feeling right now? You just got back from vacay or something, right, Alex? Yeah, just got back from Florida, man. Nice hey. little trip. Hey. Tay, how you feel, man? Good, man. Doing good. Just count, counting down the days, getting ready. Ready to rock and roll. You got your Wentz jersey yet? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> we already know Tay Cop definitely copping a Wentz jersey. Oh, right yeah. now we're talking, compared to last year, how you were, how we were feeling it kept going into last year. What's the difference compared to now? Definitely a lot more optimism, in the sense that we actually have a sense of direction at the quarterback position. It's it, it's real, it's real comfortable. Like I, right, so Carson was like fucking up. Like oh, hold up, <laughs> it's I crazy. Can't concentrate right now. Hold up, somebody <laughs> Mike is fucking tweaking right now. <laughs> We gotta get to the bottom of this shit. We I'm on. I'm on the iPhone. Going. I just uh, all my settings are good. I just okay. unplugged my mic just to make sure it wasn't me, and it ain't me. So I got the AirPods. I'm muted. I'm, and it's just still happening. I'm, can y'all hear me fine? Yeah. yeah I can hear you. Everybody, I think should mute, everybody should mute themselves, and then we all unmute one at a time. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. 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 Right. cool. Yeah, ready? I'm mute first. <laughs> all right. It's not me. It's Zach. Is it is it is it me? I don't know. I'm back. Is it is it echoing? Right. It's not me. Is it me? Is is, is it echoing again? I'm, it is. <laughs> Zach, it's Zach. 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 <laughs> Zach. Uh, it's, Zach. it's the headphone. I think it's the headphone. Oh well, Todd got his on. Got headphones. Uh, Wait, you don't have headphones? On the top. I don't hear no echoing? echoing right now. This is fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it's nothing. I don't hear anything. Now it's nothing. Somebody, wow. somebody fixed it, and they try to say shit. Well, we good now, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Welcome to the group chat pod. We got hey. technical difficulties out the way. Tay, what feels more? What feels differently going into this training camp than last year? I guess the fact that we have a quarterback. I mean, um, I feel uh, very confident. Nine. I feel like I feel content going into the going to the off season, but. I mean, going to a training camp, I feel really, really good, actually. Like, I'm not, I don't have no worries. Like, as opposed to last year, I'm worrying about, you know, Taylor Heineke and Fitzpatrick. And, but this year, I feel good, man. I think the, the aspect of having that quarterback in the saddle changes a lot. Definitely. 
definitely, definitely. Um, Pascal, how we feeling about this year, man? I'm excited about the offense more than I was uh, last year. I think I was more excited about the defense last year. But uh, this year, I feel like the offense has a chance to be kind of the one leading the team. So I'm excited because you have a quarterback and get the ball down the field. You got more weapons. So I'm definitely much more excited about the offense. Hell yeah, man. Marshall. What, what my, my, big, my big thing that I'm, I'm looking forward to is I'm really excited about this wide receiver room. I'm really big on uh, the synergy between McLaurin and, and Dotson. And even if you don't get anything from Samuel, if, if these two are playing to their capability and you have a quarterback that's an actual pro quarterback now, I'm really excited about their ability to score points. Like, I think it can be a legitimately good offense. Maybe not elite, um, but it can carry it can carry them, I think, to, to relevance. I think nine, ten wins, eleven wins, I think these things aren't impossible because of the talent they've assembled on O. I agree, man. I agree. And th the main difference, not only is it just the quarterback upgrade that we had this offseason, it's, it's year three now. So I think it's time that we start to actually accept that expectations should be higher. Like yep, yep. if you're going into this season, like, man, they're going to win seven or eight games. Or if that's what expectations are, then what the fuck are we even doing? Like, what are we doing? If that's what expectations are in year three, Ron told us it takes three to five years to build a culture. It's year three. Now he took off with the Panthers and he took off with the Panthers in year three. Uh, it's time for us to see some results. So it feels genuine that the team's going to win or that the team is expected to win games this year. Y'all hear me straight? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about to say because somebody said they could barely hear me. But, yeah, man, let's start with position groups, whether you feel it got better, got worse, or is about the same as last year. Let's start with – a position that I feel like we're not talking about as much as we should be talking about. Let's talk about the cornerback room. Did mm. the cornerback room stay the same, get worse, or get better this offseason? Jalen, I saw your eyes light up when I said that. Let you go ahead and start us off here. Um, I think it pretty much stayed the same, but I think it does have the potential to get better if Benjamin stays just can stay on the field. Um, like I've said many times on this podcast and on mine as well, um, I'm a big advocate for Benjamin St. Juice, but your best ability is availability. <laughs> I think he said he had like three concussions last year. I um, mean, that's ridiculous. But you hear about um, all the notes coming out of camp talking about how he can play in the, in the Buffalo Nickel. Uh, I think he's more of a boundary receiver, but he does have elite move traits. He moves like a 5'11 guy um, with elite measurables at 6'3". So if he breaks out in year two, I think that gives the room um, opportunity to grow. But as far as just on paper in the moment, I think we're pretty much at a still main thing about the city. Okay, and let me go to my super chat real quick. Hey, yo, y'all wilding in the group chat right now. <laughs> I just checked the thread, but my man Tyrone, shout out to him. He said, I heard a lot of y'all not liking our number two pick. But Mathis and Allen together can be unfreaking stoppable. Trade pain for linebacker. Pain is spelled wrong, but I ain't mad at you. But I, I don't know if it works as easy as trade pain for a linebacker, cause like that's, that's kind of like a Madden trade. I appreciate you though. I don't think we trade him. I think we just let him go in the off season and he we move on from we get our compensatory pick and. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. I don't know. What do y'all What do y'all think about this? I mean, I don't. I don't think there's any any need to create a hole right now, where the defense is already thin. You're not going to get much more than the compensatory anyway. Jayla, do you have something near your mic? Like something plugged up? For real? Yeah. All right, cause we try, we try to get to the bottom, but somebody shit echoing. You got us out this bitch sounding like we in the amphitheater. <laughs> somebody I, shit is wild. I'm echoing too. This yeah, I don't know what it is. Oh my. This has never happened to us before, bro. What the fuck is going? It's got to be Marshall. He the only thing new. <laughs> <laughs> Can it be the iPhone? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Marshall out here at the firehouse, man. <laughs> Somebody got the echo. That shit's crazy, but we're going to keep it pushing regardless. <laughs> we're going to keep it pushing regardless. The cornerback position. Pascal, 
your twin Benjamin St. Juice and company, <laughs> did we get better, worse, <laughs> or is it about the same? I'm going to say about, about the same. The same. Um, <laughs> uh, I think that um, I can't I can't do this, y'all. <laughs> I think we got. I think we're about the same. I'm. I'm gonna just end it right there. Hold up. Hold up. It just. It stopped. It stopped for a second. It did just stop. It did. Alex, you in? Uh, yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. Um, yeah, I might know. I love the fact that there's a little bit of continuity there. Um, I know Chris Harris has a really good stronghold on that group. Uh, I really want to see what we can get out of BSJ, like Jaden alluded to. But if we can get that for 17 games to actually see the actual growth, that's cool. Um, Kendall, it'd be good to see him round in the form. I think William Jackson as well. Like I think a lot of continuity in this defense again because he did play pretty decent. He wasn't like terrible, horrific. You know, he wasn't our worst DB by any stretch. But it's gonna flow from that interior line all the way to the back end. We'll see how they get it going, man. I don't really have high hopes, but it's more of a let's wait and see. I just feel like when you're paying a guy the rate that we're paying him and the freight that we're paying him, you got to expect more. You can't yeah. just be a guy out that motherfucker, you know? Yeah. You got to be producing. Shout out to my guy, DeAndre Taylor. He says, salute, fellas, with the 199 oh. Super. My boy, Dylan Holiday. just to remind y'all, we're giving out a, a Commander's mini helmet. The Echo's gone right now, right? Sound like it. Yeah, that's the mini helmet, by the way, that Pascal just showed. I don't hear Echo right now. We good right now? I think we good. Is it? Am I? I'm not echoing. I'm not echoing a little bit still, still but I, oh. I'm not echoing. Like I don't hear it, and I don't hear anyone else echoing right now. Mar Marshall was on mute. I don't know who. So, I don't know, but we should be good at this point. But yeah, man, cornerback room. Marshall, how you feel about the cornerback room? It's such a wild card. Such a wild, a wild card, card because, because it, it relies, relies on Kendall, on Kendall Fuller, Fuller not losing a step. step. It, it relies, relies on St. Juice uh, uh, keeping healthy and taking, and taking the next, next step. step. The depth yeah, scares me. I'm really, really scared about the depth there. there. I feel I like feel if like there's a weakness in the defense, it's going to be because of the depth, depth in particular at corner. Okay. And Zach? Unmute. Oh no, it's Zach. It's, it's Zach, bro. <laughs> it might be two of them. I don't know. Yeah. How, are you, how are you streaming? Are you on your phone or on the computer? I'm on an iPad. But an iPad. The volume down low. Yeah, this is crazy. Uh, that joint just turned up. <laughs> as soon as you unmute it. It sounds like it sounds like Marshall and Zach are in the same room. Yeah. <laughs> you know when you're next to the speaker or the, like the computer or some shit? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this shit is wild right now, man. Is it still bad? No, nah, it's good. It's straight for now. It's better. Yeah, you're good. Go ahead and get your shit off, man. Cornerback room. Yeah, um, kind of echoing what you guys said. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's about the same. Um, excited about St. Juice, for sure. Um, hopefully he doesn't get any more concussions. <laughs> Knock on wood, but um, yeah, and then we need to see like what McCain does. You know what I mean? He he flashed a little bit at the end, but was it just because we were on the way out, or was he starting to like grasp the playbook and stuff? So, um, yeah, I, I would say about the same. So okay, and. Dylan, I, I I like the question. I don't even know if I have the energy to answer a Dan Snyder question right now. You know what I'm saying? See, okay, so the, I see I see that echo just turned off when somebody <laughs> hit that mute button. <laughs> and then somebody got a TV or something going because it definitely sounded like, like a TV running or some shit. But man, you know what I think about Dan voluntarily giving his testimony? I will believe anything that happens to Dan Snyder when I see that shit in breaking news and in wax. Daniel Snyder's being removed or something of the sort. I don't even have the energy to talk about that at the moment. I'll close out this cornerback. This, hold on, Tay, did you hit? Oh, yeah, Tay ain't touch it yet. Go ahead, tap it, Tay. No, I'm, I'm going to say, gonna say slightly, slightly better. better. Because I think Cam Curl's going to be a little bit better, and I'm banking on the improvement, those guys. But uh, Jalen just uh, did a the top five receiver thing, and I think it's going to be slightly better because of the competition we played this year. I, I don't think we're playing any um, – like we played last year, receivers. 
for that for the most part. So I think uh, you'll slightly be better. Okay. And I, I guess I'll just be the only one in the room. I don't really feel like we got better at all at the cornerback position. Like, I don't really feel like we improved. And until Benjamin St. Juice can go a calendar month without a concussion, I don't know, man. I think, like, everybody's talking about the linebackers and how we need one of those, but I don't – do we do we have a number one corner on the roster? Because I don't think we do. What do y'all think about bringing in a guy like Joe Hayden? Bringing him back on. Joe Hayden? Oh, I'm not opposed to that. At, at this juncture for this team, yes. I think like that kind of presence in the locker room that brings a winning mindset, a playoff attitude, someone who's been there. You know, when, when some of the rookies or other guys are hitting that little wall, he's been there. He'd be excellent in that room. I think he'd be outstanding and amazing. That, that would be lovely. I mean, whatever production you can get out of him would be a bonus. But what he brings to that, what, what they're trying to build as a team, it'd be perfect. I, I actually would like that. I like it to bring, right bring, you know, Daniel Snyder has a fetish for bringing local guys home. But on top of that, he's actually a talented corner. He's getting up there in age, but he has ball skills that we lack at the moment for the on the roster. So I'll take it. Like we have a lot yeah. of we have we have a lot of question marks at that position. I really feel like that position is as big a need <clears throat> as freaking the, the linebacker spot. But we're not really talking about it much, man. What you uh, anybody else got anything to say on that? We can move to the next position. No, nah, I think we can move on. All right, let's go on. A, let's go to safety. Let's go to safety because I that wasn't like a secondary thing. It was just like a cornerback thing. Safety. Oh. I think we definitely. I know because yeah, you said Cam Kerr. I was like, bro, he, corner. He running corner for us now. But safety. I'm definitely saying we got better because there's a plan with this Percy Butler kid, Master P, out of Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? You know he had to have got named after Master P, being from Louisiana and being named Percy. I think he's going to be a player for us. And the dude is all football. This 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 motherfucker don't even want to take pictures or be interviewed. This, this dude just wants to go out and ball. I think the combination of him and Cam Curl and Bobby McCain being versatile and being moved around the defense, I think the safety position is going to – the safety is just going to surprise some folks. Maybe we get something out of Jeremy Reeves in a real game and not in practice smacking Deami Brown. We'll see. But I feel like the safety position definitely got better this year. Zach, what do you think? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zach in a horror movie right now. I have no idea what's going on there. Zach's stuck in the ring right now. <laughs> get it. The ring. <laughs> Something we ain't never seen in okay. fans here. My boy Chris. Shout out to my boy Chris, by the way. He said we're going to change the name to Echoing with Rhea. Dude, for real. <laughs> I just, I don't know what's going on. Um, this shit is wild. Safety. Uh, does Landon Collins count as a safety? <laughs> is that a linebacker? He's on uh, yet? Uh, <laughs> who knows? I mean... I can't, I can't, I can't, can't really, really say, say because, because you have McCain, McCain and, then and then you have Curl, Curl which, which is nice. I mean, you know, yeah, Curl's going to produce, but, but like, like, what is Percy going to do, you know? Is he is he going to crumble under the pressure, or is he going to step up and be that Buffalo Nickel guy, or what? So, um, <laughs> Mama, I said reverb with Rio. And the funniest shit in the chat uh, right now. <laughs> I'm going to say the same. I'm going to say the same because, you know, a lot left to uh, see. They said, who's streaming in FedEx field? I'm fucking weak, bro. Stop it. <laughs> hey, son, go to fuck head, son. And where Marshall go to? I wonder if he had a call because, you know. Yeah, he had a call. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, he was streaming out of the, the firehouse. If you don't know, my man Marshall is a fireman. And you might, my man's had to go save some lives. So shout out to my boy. But Jalen, safety room. Better, worse, or the same? Uh, Safety room. I'm going to say better. I think Cam Kirkle makes that year three jump where um, he starts to get nationally recognized. I think that he's going to be used um, in a plethora of ways. Um, if we can remember early last season, um, in like the first half of the season, there were games when he was only playing like 40% of the stats. And I think a lot of them was trying to appease Landon Collins' ego. 
um, because we want Cam closer to the box. Um, and even with that being said, him playing about 40% of the stats, he was still about 100 tackle safety. Uh, so I think that this is the year with him uh, commanding that, um, no pun intended, commanding that number one safety role, uh, something that he didn't have his rookie year initially. Um, he was a backup initially. Um, and then, like I said, splitting time with Andy Collins initially going into the season last year. Um, and I'm excited about Percy Butler as well. Um, the few highlight clips that I've seen, uh, his speed jumped off. So if he if he's able to get his eyes down pat and gets his technique down pat, I think that um, he has the potential to um, have true sideline and sideline range. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be coming true to fruition until maybe later in the season. Um, I like the prospects of it, especially pairing him with a guy like Cam Curl and Bobby McCain. Okay. <laughs> and Alex, what you feel, man? Safety position. I know you're going to be high on somebody, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely want to say that we definitely got better at the safety position. Um, I'm excited to see what Cam Curl and Bobby are going to do following up. But um, I just love the idea or the thought that this defense, we may possibly see three safeties on the field at one time. And I feel like that's when our defense can really get a little bit freaky out there. That's something that that's a prospect that I really enjoy. But um, like you mentioned, they do have a plan with Percy Butler coming in. And they mentioned him as, you know, that nickel, uh, Buffalo nickel. But also, I know from you guys' notes, Derek Force is making a splash too. So that's somebody who, you know, saying we got to definitely throw in the mix as well. Like Derek Force is a name that they, y'all were telling me and everyone else that he was running with the ones. I'm like, okay, well, this sounds pretty good. We're going to have a nice rotation. That's crazy. Guys. I didn't even think of him when I was getting my you shit know what I'm saying? about like, the safeties. Yeah, yeah. Like, like when y'all are saying that, I'm like, it, I, I'm excited at the prospect of potentially seeing three safeties on the field at one time. And that would just be great. The defense would just be that much faster for some niggas situations, whatever. But I'm excited for the safety group. Definitely, definitely, for sure. For sure. You, got, you got to see it to believe it with Derek Forrest. Same, he was doing same. Some preseason snaps that I saw last year. He was getting Nasty. by quarterbacks, bro. Like, it was horrible. So I, I got to see it to believe it with Derek Forrest. He is not – it was a reason why I didn't include him into my safety view. I did not forget him. Mm. Him, so. Hell yeah, man. Hey, hey if the echo – the echo has got better, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Is, yeah. is it gone? How we, how we, how we sounding on y'all end? Chris, just a little bit better. It sounds a little bit better. There's no better. more ring, but yeah, I know I'm still echoing. Going. I got the echo setting on. Yeah. So. Like I, I mean, I don't hear it on my end anymore. I don't know when Zach. Am and I Marshall echoing? Nah, yeah. well, since Zach and Marshall checked out, it sounds clean. They said we got to do an echo stream every Wednesday now. <laughs> 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 no, nah, that shit is hilarious. Oh, this is a random question too. Uh, my boy said, "Where do y'all think OBJ and Julio end up?" That's a good. I forgot that they exist. To be perfectly honest, OBJ, OBJ going gonna be a contender. Yeah, I was gonna say he gonna be back sure. on the Rams. I was about to say, I think OBJ stays with LA, and I think Julio goes to the Packers. Ooh, mm. yeah. yeah. That's I can see Julio on like the Chiefs at some point in the season too. Yeah, hey, yeah, I was about to say, it may not be the start of the season. Or like the Bills Raiders. or somewhere. No, the Yeah, Raiders. The Raiders could be I think sneaky. The Raiders? Raiders would be crazy. I can't see it with the Ravens. It should be the Ravens because yeah, they, be, they, be, they be acting like they gave Lamar like a, a litany of weapons, bro. Yeah. They gave him Rashad Bateman was like, you good, fam. Be great. Bateman's going to be that guy. Yeah. You yeah. think so? You think so? Yeah, Bateman's definitely yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bateman's gonna definitely be that guy for sure. I don't know, man. He might he might be Brashad Perriman again, but he should he could be definitely better. I don't know. It seems like the Ravens, as perfectly as they draft, they don't draft receivers well. Our receivers are set up to succeed in their system. That's why yeah. I don't like Julio. Thanks. Thanks. True shit. Yeah. True shit. Zach, where do you think OBJ and Julio end up? Mm, OBJ probably goes back to the Rams. I mean, I mean, they're, they're, they're probably going to be one of those, one of those guys, guys that, that help a team win right, right, right in the right playoffs. In the playoffs. They're just going to be like, oh, we forgot oh, about him. They brought him in here just to, here just to catch some tutties. So. So. Okay. Thinking Rams, Rams and then, and then Julio. Julio. I don't know. Do y'all, do y'all think? No, nah, no. Nah, I'm not even. I'm not even asking the question. I don't even. Think we should consider. Like, what, what if we signed one of them? Would it make any sense? 
No, but I mean, I think that changes everything. Because if you're signing someone like Odell, you're taking a swing at the whole thing. That's not no, oh, you're coming here to just, nah, fam. Like, y'all shooting for the stars above the moon at that point. Seriously. That, yeah, I think, I think it have to, to make. It have to, it have to be for injuries, I think. <laughs> yeah, we live from the amphitheater, bro. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck is going on? I'm about to get out of here and, and diagnose all of this and let y'all pod while I figure out what the fuck is going on. Because somebody yes, shit is, is echoing, echoing like a motherfucker. It says, see y'all at the free practice. I'm from Wisconsin, pulling up Flea, and I'm a Tesla. That's what's good, man. Shout out to you, man. Pull up on us at the stadium. Free free BP smoke on me and Jalen. Anybody who wants it, you come to FedEx Field, bro. We out here. $2. Yes, sir. I'm watching everybody. Hell yeah. Yo, somebody just got invaded by some Stranger Things type shit. I don't know what the fuck just happened. Hey, somebody, yo. somebody just got pro. Yo, what the fuck is going on tonight, bro? That was probably me because I turned my eyes on just to think it might work with some reverse psychology type shit. So that one Yo, was probably me. <laughs> we got to get to the rest, bottom of this definitely shit. Definitely not me. We ain't never it. went through this shit on a group pod yeah. before. Why the fuck is the sound tweaking today, bro? Man, we we going to keep it pushing. We going to keep it training. What's next? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We only got about we two of them, so I mean, we going to push through that. We back. Who ain't, who ain't talked about the safeties yet? Who want to talk about Derek Forrest? <laughs> <laughs> I like I like Defo on special teams. Uh, hopefully they can use him as a Buffalo. I think he's good up at least. Not, I don't know about him playing uh, coverage, but I would like to see him in the Buffalo on rundowns. Jalen looks profound. He he knew DeShazer, bro. Yeah, he's our emergency safety. Oh. Even DeShazer yeah. splash though. Yeah. I've never seen a Derek Forrest splash. I, I've, this season was bad. I, I, Jalen, you remember? Do you remember, you remember that play action fake? You remember yes, he, when he, he yeah. The opposite way of the roll out? Yeah. 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 Like, oh, what, what do y'all see in this guy? I'm, I'm sorry. I have low expectations for Derek Forrest, but he'll be on the roster, and he'll probably get some burn. He seems but, like a great yeah. culture guy. I only mentioned him as a man because y'all said he was running with the ones. I'm like, he'll be that's, on a, the that's a big leap like for him, man. He was on the roster for the last time. Oh, yeah. Somebody the said it's the Android. Android. <laughs> it's the Android. We only got one Android in the group chat. We don't want to put no fingers. <laughs> No. Can't blame it on that. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so you think the safety position got better, Tay? Um uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um D line, we don't really have to go over the D line because the D line, they just need to fucking prove it. They have the pieces to be dominant. Let's just end the defense with the linebacker room. This should be an interesting discussion. Better, worse, or the same? Alex, go ahead and start us off. Linebacker room. I'm definitely going to say the same because uh, a lot of it hinges on our current incumbents improving, you know. So until we see it, like Jalen is saying, there's not really much we can sit up here and go off. Um, I'm definitely excited to see Jamin progress as an outside linebacker. I'm excited to see Cole take a hold of the mic position at linebacker. Um, I guess the rest of the room will really shake itself out because uh, who, who else is out there? We've got David Mayo. Am I forgetting somebody? David Mayo, man. <laughs> pretty, it's, pretty, it's, pretty uninspiring. Your boy Hudson. Yeah, my oh, man yeah, Hudson, yo, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got oh, We got to stop the conversation <laughs> real quick. Alex. You yeah. are a firm believer of Khalid Hudson, and the group chat wants to know why. <laughs> Hitman, you know, right. he was he was actually one of their first projects of that whole Viper Buffalo nickel position, you know. He was definitely one of those guys, and Ron was zamping him up. And he, he couldn't play. Game. And he couldn't He couldn't. Play. He couldn't. The, the most I ever seen out of him was that Seattle game. Y'all remember uh, Guy Rush is so Dwayne, when we, we were playing against Seattle and Russell and them, I was just like, okay, he finally gets some action. And then they put him in at the goal line, a couple goal line situations. I'm like, all right, they got to trust him a little bit, but it's not enough. I need more, but hey, we'll see. Not talking to yeah. All right, and shout out, to, shout out to the chat, by the way. Make sure y'all smash like. We got over 100 in the chat right now. Everybody smash that like button. Make sure you're subbed to my guys. My boy Dylan said, way too early predictions, but where do you guys rank Jahan Dotson for Offensive Rookie of the Year? Hmm. 
That's spicy. Jalen, you're on mute, but go ahead. No, nah, I was just saying I like that question. Um, I think he, I think he's ranked pretty high. I wouldn't put him at the top. Um, I think Chris Olave might get there just with his polish, his NFL readiness, and his opportunity with like Michael Thomas still being injured and Alvin Kamara potentially being suspended early. So he'll probably he'll probably be number one just off his opportunity. Um, but I'll put him maybe in the top five uh, because when you think about it with like draft position and things like that, he was one of the highest offensive players outside of the lineman or anything like that. So these awards typically go to skill positions. Uh, I don't think there was a running back that was drafted high that had a great opportunity. Um, so I'm definitely I'm definitely the prospect for it. Uh, I'll give him a top five. If I was set to odds, I'll put him at like maybe – Maybe plus two twenty five or something like that. Okay, okay. The two and the three though, Jay. The two and the three. I know he ain't one. Oh yeah. I think I think that I think that Garrett Wilson, um, that that Zach Wilson, the Garrett Wilson connection might be something to look out for in the rookie of the year conversation. And if Christian Watkin or Watson learns how to catch the fucking football, he has Aaron Rodgers throwing him the pass. Imagine the inflation of his statistics if he learns to actually have hands. So I don't know. It's, I think Jahan Dotson does fit in the mix because he's going to start for us. Yep. Yeah, I feel like, though, the only way for Dotson to really be in the offensive, not the only way, but I feel like it would require Terry missing some time, if that makes sense, because I feel like in order for Jahan to get the volume for that he would need to be offensive rookie of the year, he needs to be getting all those looks, but I, th- I don't. He's gonna get plenty of looks, but I think that if Terry's off the field for some reason, then I think Dotson's like uh, close to a lock for not close to not a lock, but like top three, top two for offensive rookie of the year. Huh? I couldn't hear you. I'm real, real. Can you? I was like. Ooh, I think my bad. I have my shit muted. Me, I, I have my shit muted. But yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> I think Brees Hall is going to get the rookie of the year. Rookie of the year, probably. I like him in that offense. But I think Jahan is definitely the top five. Like Jay just said, that I can see him. I don't think he quite get it, but I think he's going to definitely take the lead. Of <laughs> what if Jahan has a Deami Brown rookie season? I like, I like that Brees Hall. <laughs> yeah, I do too. That's that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a solid pick right there. I forgot about the running backs in this draft class, to be perfectly honest. But, you know what I'm saying? Let's move it on to the offensive side of the ball, though. We know we improved at the quarterback position in more ways than one with the fifth-round pick and the big trade we made in the offseason. The running back room, better, the same, or worse? This should be easy for everybody, but I'll start with you, Tay. Better. I don't even got to say nothing. Better. Better. Jalen. Um, better. Um, we previously got our RB one and Brian Robinson. Uh, we got a third down, uh, third down back coming back. You know, me as the president of the JD McKissick fan club, I always got to point it out there. Um, that that's that's my guy. Um, but yeah, I think that Brian Robinson is gonna steal some touches from Antonio Gibson. Um, uh, he's a poor natural runner. Um, we have a, a bruiser back that we were missing last year. Um, we have a guy that can take some reps off of that. Funny, okay. so I think we got better for good. For sure. Uh, Pascal, you with us? Yeah, definitely better. I think that I mean, you know you know where I stand. I mean, I think Gibson is going to be better because he's he's lost the weight. He's slimmed down like he needed to. But uh, I think Brian Robinson, he's a natural running back. Like, and he's Alabama running back. The odds of your Alabama running back being good to very good are are pretty high. So. I mean, I, I could see a scenario where he ends up taking over at a certain point if Gibson's fumbling issues continue. It's definitely better. I agree. Like, I could see him getting a lot of the goal line carries and ending up taking over that role. He's built to be a bell cow style back, and he's coming from Bama, and he doesn't have that much tread on the tire. So I definitely think that he, sooner than later, and if Gibson starts to put that ball on the ground, then it's certainly – uh, it's, it's certainly a conversation to have that he's going to be our RB1 at some point. Anybody else want to say anything else on the matter before we move to another um, position? Because this seems pretty easy. Yeah, I'm going to definitely say better uh, for all the reasons that you guys mentioned. It's just a skillfully diverse group. Um, every last one of them can do something that this team needs. Um, and like you're saying, like, there's a chance Brian Robinson could eventually take over. 
But I do also think that with him being there, we might see the best version of Gibson that we haven't seen in some time. We finally see those explosive plays because now that you got some heat under your ass, you're going to have to perform, you know. And so what have you done for me lately type of job. So, hey, if he wants to stay on the field, he's going to do what he got to do. Hell yeah, man. But let's go to the offensive line because Pascal's favorite player is no longer here. Brandon Sheriff, the guard, Jay Gruden's favorite guy of all time. But we did bring in two former Panthers, Commanders, if you will, and Andrew Norwell and Trey Turner. But, you know, did the offensive line get better, worse, or the same? I'm going to start with Tay again. Yeah, I'm going to say better. I like the, the veteran guys that came over from uh, Carolina. Go, both were, I don't know if Norwell was a Pro Bowl guy, but I know. Um, What's the other guy's name? I'm losing. Trey. Trey. Trey Turner. Trey. I know he was with uh, with our O line coach. Swaggiest um, dude on the team. Yeah, he, yeah, he's tough. He's tough. And uh, <laughs> Sam Cosme, I think he's going to be better. Uh, I'm not a big Leno fan, but I mean, I guess he'll, <laughs> he'll do. I mean, he'll do. So uh, I think we got better though, as far as overall depth. Um, and I think we got a veteran group. I love it. I love it. So you think it? Hold on. You think the line got minus Sheriff? You think the line got better this off season? Yeah. Um, addition by subtraction. Addition by subtraction. I love it. And I I love paying the two of them like a fraction of what we were going to pay Brandon yeah. Sheriff to be like the league's fifth or sixth best guard. And for that, like, I won't even like, I didn't hate Brandon Sheriff, but I didn't love Brandon Sheriff. So it didn't really move the needle for me when he left. Alex, better or worse or the same? Uh, I'm definitely going to say better. And it's outside of the guys that we added. I think it just sticks to the strength of having the depth again because having that O-line depth helped us immensely down the line. When Chase went down, when we had uh, keep Ishmael step in, Schweitzer still back there. We just have a flow of guys that, God forbid, if anything crazy happens, we know we're still going to be stout, you know, and the show can keep running at a pace. Okay. Oh, this is a tough question right here. Jalen, um, if we're being honest, um, it's worse. Um, uh, mm. we're talking about just evaluation, so we're talking about just the talent standpoint and not necessarily how much you spent on it. Now, while I agree with them, that, you know, not giving Sheriff, you know, twenty million dollars, I forgot he got like eighteen to twenty million dollars. I agree with it, but in terms of talent, we got worse. We lost Brandon Sheriff and we lost Eric Flowers, so I think about the home in Washington. Um, this is a guy who excelled in Washington under two. Um, under two different, you know, offensive lines and different regimes and things like that. Because uh, he was initially brought in under Jay Gruden in 2019. I think a lot of people seem to forget that. Um, so I think we honestly got worse. Uh, while I'm awful familiarity and things like that, um, Trey Turner was bad last season. Like, there was a reason, yeah, there was a reason why he was on, he was on, you know, the wire and things like that. And with Carson Wentz's play, we all know, no matter if you're an advocate, you against Carson or whatever, we all can admit that he holds on to the ball for the Lord knows how long. Yeah, he does. So, I mean, that ties into the offensive line play as well. Thank you, Tay. We, we always hear it, Tay, because I don't know what's this infatuation everybody got with Charles Leno Jr., because I think that they seem to forget that he got our starting quarterback hurt last season. I think it's because his wife talks to fans on Instagram and things like that and Twitter and things. They got, they got him thinking that he's better than what he is. Um, serviceable, serviceable, cool. But I'm used to Chris Stanley. I'm used to Trent Williams. Like, like we, we can be better at that position. Like, Man, every time I hear Trent name, I just want to just shed a thug tear. Right, we, can be, we, can be, we can be better at that position. Like, I do too. I do too. When I saw him in that 99, Bruh. man, what? I was sick. I was looking at that girl like, <laughs> I was so you know, you know the Wolverine, the Wolverine meme. Yeah, That's how I was looking yeah, at it, bro. Yeah, <laughs> he was ours, bro. It was definitely me. Um, but just to end it off, uh, y'all know I'm a big Sam Cosby fan, um, especially in the run game. Um, if we can get his work together in the pass game, I think that he can be a, a all pro type tackle. But he has to get that technique down because of the physical capabilities of it. Yeah, I seen in the interview. Um, th this week or so that he said he wants to be the best tackle in the league, Sam Cosme. That's crazy. Is 
he's probably the most talented. He's easily the most talented most lineman talented. Yeah, on the yeah. in the unit right now. He has to stay healthy, just like we were talking about with St. Juice. Like he was our best rookie last year, but we didn't really see much of him because he was hurt. He was on the damn injury report the whole season. But yeah, man, my, my guy said, careful what y'all put in the atmosphere. Gibson will mess around and go to San Francisco in a couple years and be the next Roger Craig and Kyle Shanahan scheme. That's an obscure reference for a lot of people. If if everybody keep pushing him closer out of town, it's not that we're pushing him out of town. Oh, do you are you planning to pay him? You plan on running back? That, when that, was, that was my thing too. Who's pushing him out of town? But well, we got to realize he's halfway through his rookie contract. He's not a he's not a first round draft pick. This is a four year deal, and we still talking about him missing missing open run lanes. I love his potential, and I'm not. Pushing them out of town, but like we gotta be realistic with ourselves, guys. That's why you draft running backs every draft because it's such a volatile position. Because you know they have short contracts and short lifespans and things like that. So I'm not necessarily pushing them out of town, but we we gotta be real. Um, the elite running back to break out in their first and second year, and I never haven't necessarily seen superstar and breakout from Antonio Gibson yet. Yeah, and to me, the vision is as much as a problem as the ball security is. Well, you want to touch on the Antonio Gibson thing before we leave? Is that? No, nah, I mean, y'all. Yo, yo. Sorry, is it loud? No, you're good now. Okay, cool. Um, we echo free. Hey, look at God. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think you, you draft a running back every year. I mean, you've seen it time and time again that guys can produce in the third, fourth, fifth round. So. I mean, I don't think it's wrong to, um, you know, criticize his fumbling issues because it's absolutely a problem. So, I mean, if he goes and succeeds somewhere else, it is what it is. That's how the game rolls. So, Tay, you want to touch on Gibby? Yeah, um, I like Gibby. Um, I think Br. Brian Roberts Jr. You're going to go ahead and take. take most of those so carries, so though. Know, However, I do I think, think he's going to be a lot more, more featured, in featured in the passing game this year. year. So, so hopefully that will kind of take off that load from, from him from fumbling and uh, uh, doing, doing dumb, dumb stuff. stuff. But, but I think, think Brian Robinson Jr., he's, he's not coming to be a backup. He's coming to be a starter. Okay. I love it, bro. I love that energy in the air. What up, Queen Sheen, by the way? They won right here. Make sure y'all smash like. And I apologize for the force the first 47 minutes where we were in echo we were at echo stage for the whole first 47 minutes yeah, of the yeah, show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. <laughs> we working, that. we rolling with the technical difficulties and we we getting it in at this point. She said, Do y'all think they'll get a mascot? If so, what he'd want it to be. I they honestly, will get a mascot. Isn't that like didn't they say that? They were yeah, they're gonna mascot? announce it, I think, the last week of the season or something. I don't know. Yeah, we're announcing the last week of the season. We're doing a fan in the vote. Hall. Yeah, we're a fan vote, and it's probably gonna be something to make the cranky people in the or in the fan base happy. It's gonna be a hog in a military outfit or something. I don't yeah, know. Right, I don't right. put a put a dog in a jersey. I don't care what the you the mascot should be a fucking trophy because I need to see us win one of them motherfuckers before I die, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? I, I don't care what the mascot is. It'll be cool to have one. I, I just, you, we have a mascot right now. It's on the helmet and it's what I want to see the team do. Get W's. I don't care if you get a W, put a dude in a costume W with some legs, call him Dubby, and keep it moving, bro. I don't. I I want to win, bro. Like Dubby. I'm gonna just say this, bro. Don't ask us for our vote if you already got the mask I selected. You know what I'm saying? Nah. <laughs> don't, 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 don't sit up here and tell us, you know what I'm saying, vote. We gonna show you at the end Nah, you know, if y'all already got it picked out. <laughs> oh man, here go, here go. This we see we starting with this shit. My man said, I think Sam Howell takes the starting job by week six. Lord, absolutely not. But I think he uh, breaks <laughs> training camp as QB two. Ooh, I, I need, I want that. I want that for I sure. Think they, I, think yeah. I think they're gonna have some trick plays for him. I think he's gonna do a lot of uh, QB option plays, maybe in the end zone, maybe some some QB runs, maybe. Well, read option. Read he has some read option. options. I would yeah, love to see. I, don't know what. I would love to see Howell Fry in preseason because it's crazy with the way media and fans fan in this area. It's crazy that it's been quiet on the Sam Howell front because he had a solid off season for us. 
I guess we have so much to talk about here. And then we got shit like Jack Del Rio and Daniel the Dweeb. Like, mm-hmm. people forget that we drafted a quarterback in this draft. I think it's because where we drafted him, too. Good. Let him bake. Let him bake. Yeah, let him bake. Let and there's bake. a lot of trust in the guy that got it down right now, man. Let him bake. You don't need to be in any news headlines. That's how we ruin every quarterback. Let him nope. bake. Yep. Nope. Wolf Commanders, yo. I, I'm trying to just let the wolf shit die because niggas wanted it and we didn't get it. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to let that wolf. You think, you think we can get a wolf mascot, Zach? I know a few people that really want it. Keep, keep fighting the good fight, Hercules, though. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? It's going to be a big ass hog. You already know, man. It's going to be a pig. Ugly ass pig. Hell yeah, bro! Might as well do stand up. Hey man, we, we 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 keep it we keep it funny on here, man. You got to smile in life. Life can get real depressing if you don't smile and make a good time and take it too seriously. But the wide receiver position clearly better. But you know, I want everybody's take on it. Zach, start us off. Yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously better. better. Um, you know what was it last year? I think the second. Uh, guy in receiving was like 400, no, 300 yards or something like that. And no touchdowns. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. So it's really exciting. Hopefully Curtis Samuel, you know, stays on the field. Um, it's going to be exciting. I mean, obviously better. Obviously. Alex. Uh, all right, let me start off with this. I think y'all uh, well know about Carson being the first and only quarterback to throw for 4,000 plus yards without having a receiver go for over 500. Well, there's a lot of miles to feed here. And I definitely know Terry's going to get his 1,000 yards for sure. I wonder if we're going to have a number two receiver, someone follow suit and follow up with 1,000 yards as well. Like, it wouldn't surprise me by any stretch, but I would very much welcome it. I don't know if it's going to come via Jahan Dawson. It should. It very much should, but that just goes to show the amount of weaponry, artillery we have on the outside with Carson. Um, I'm just excited for the group as a whole. I think Curtis is going to definitely have one of his better years. I think Jalen alluded to it before, Tomo, uh, as far as all-purpose jobs is concerned. Like, this should be one of the better years for Curtis Samuel. I'm excited for Diami. I just feel like the plethora of guys is not one person you can focus in. And any given day, that ticket time might go off. It could be number two. It could be 17. It could be number one. Man, pick your poison. I'm just ready to see the boys get to it, man. Oh, yeah. Excited. Jay, Jay, you speaking the gospel. He said it's going to be Christmas by the time the white and black jerseys drop. Bro, Christmas is, is optimistic at this man, point, bro. We may not touch them joints till the new stadium is built, bro. <laughs> like them joints. <laughs> Oh, shit. Hey, who knows when, when we'll see a stitch jersey if hit a show? It, if you can fit a youth large, go ahead up to Springfield. Get you, uh, <laughs> hey, man, we I got to hit the gym, bro, so I can get me a youth <laughs> large there because we ain't never going. We ain't never going to see him, bro. Jalen, go ahead. Wide receiver position. Um, yeah, the wide receiver room got immensely better this year. Uh, and I think it, um, a lot of it has to do from what end. Um, like I said in my last podcast episode, uh, as the reading BNB podcast, we didn't bring me go. Um, that we gave Terry Perform the money now, like we have to take that job. Um, I know fans adore Terry. I love Terry just as much as the next person. But I'll be right here and I think that he doesn't have flaws in his game. I know I've been saying since last year that Terry came on and never moved to save his life. Uh, now, he gets better in that aspect of the game, along with some other aspects, very, very minor aspects. I'm um, not saying he has any goals in his games at all. Um, but if you guys have checked out uh, me and Rio actually did an episode, where I think the, the Ami Brown has the potential to break out. Uh, this is the guy, I think, who, if you listen to his press conference, you can see uh, how he looked when we were out here at Minicamp. Uh, the NFL hit him like a ton of bricks, and he took it and he, he knew it. Like, and he responded to it. You can see it with the way he was training with the Knicks. You can see it in the way his body is. Uh, we got physically stronger because I think that was one of his issues or one of his weaknesses last year was his play strength. Man, swole. Um, yeah, he's <laughs> got like big body right now. Big like, swole. He's like a special <laughs> receiver right now. And just to return to Curtis Samuel, um, he's going to give it to you out of the backfield. He's going to give it to you in reverse. Just he just has to stay on the field. Um, he's a jitterbug with the ball in his hands. So, 
Um, like I said, I think that we have the potential to get you like a bomb dope bag bag type of offense. Woo! Um, along with like Smash Mouth, you know, we need to with Brian Robinson Jr. and Antonio Gibson. So I, I like I said at the, at the beginning of this episode. I think that this offense has a lot of potential, and it starts with the wide receiver room and how much better we got there over the course of the all season. Hell yeah. Before I let you touch on it, Tay, shout out to Steve, Phil, and Dev. Command this podcast, formerly known as the Washington Football Addicts. He said, I don't care what's on the side of the helmet. Put a chokehold on that motherfucker and call it blue dog shit. Frank Lucas, just get the dubs. My boy Steve, man. That's that's real shit right there, man. That is real shit right there, bro. I don't care what the mascot is. Pascal, would you like to chime in on the mascot? Uh, No. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) So I guess he, Pascal, agrees with that sentiment. Everything good, man. I heard you just had a situation with y'all food at the crib. You good? Yeah, yeah. Have to go. Have to go burn down the Wendy's. (laughs) I mean, not the not the Wendy's, the Chick Fil A. Yeah, it was it was my pleasure. (laughs) (laughs) Tay, wide receiver position, better, worse, or the same? Uh, I'll say better. Um, I think the Army might, might be closer to a thousand this year than I, than, and I'm I'm gonna say like seven. It's ambitious. Um, I think Dotson will probably get more touchdowns, like more like more, more catches. Sorry, I think he'll get like more like I wouldn't say a hundred catches, but he would be like that type of guy that gets a lot of catches and you see him in his own, always open. But I think as far as the deep shot, I'm thinking like a Diami on like a Aldrick Robinson on steroids with him and RG3 that one year, just seeing them deep open all the time. So, um, yeah, I think this is this, this group is just crazy. I think this is the best group we've had. Um, obviously, they have to go out and perform, but I would say it's up there with the Deshaun and Pierre uh, group. I think so. And I think we got the quarterback that can distribute the ball. We know he likes to hold on to it, you know. You know, he likes to make every play like a third and 30 to win the game. You know, he doesn't like to take a sack or just throw the ball away or let a play die. But I think we have the weapons that he can get the ball out of his hands quick. Or if he needs to spread, he he needs to layer it down the field. I think he's going to be able to do that. I think the receiver position is immensely improved because I'm counting Curtis Samuel as a new addition to the team because he didn't play for us last year. He didn't play for us last year. As far as I'm concerned, he was a Panther because he did not do anything but ride the Peloton last year. So immensely better. We got a wide receiver two and a sl- starting slot receiver gadget guy in one off season. And I don't expect De'Ami Brown to have 160 yards this year. So I'm going to say immensely better. Pascal, wide receiver position. Damn, I thought you were talking about De'Ami when you say wide receiver two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, no, I think they definitely got better because Terry McLaurin's shown he gets better every season. Curtis Samuel, healthy people forget how good he can be. And then uh, I think Jahan Dotson, like, there's a there's a clear high floor for him. Like, he's going to be a certain level of good. It's just a matter of how great he'll be. And then, you know, year two, Diami is looking like he's going to do so. Honestly, I think Diami will improve more just from having a quarterback uh, who's not Taylor Heineke. So I think your receiver room has potential to be, like, very good if everything goes right. Definitely better than last year. For sure. And to start off, like, and to cap off the receiver thing, and to start off our next topic, we're going to do some either or questions. Crazy that Queen Sheen and BC Savage both asked this question. This was definitely on the show plan to get to. Who's going to have more yards? Let's go yards and touchdowns. Dotson or Samuel? I'm going to, I'm going to start. I'm going to take be spicy. Give me Dotson for both. Definitely go on Dotson. Samuel for both. Mm. You want Samuel yeah. for both? So oh, you actually yeah. expect him to be present most of the season. We got to justify this contract. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm with the I, I'm I think we Rio. probably need it to be Samuel, but I, I'm going I'm going Han Solo on this one, man. So Jalen, tell me where I'm wrong. 2020 Curtis Samuel highlights. Look, look, Curtis Samuel is nice. He's very nice, but until I see him on the field playing a full game, multiple games, I don't believe he's going to be on the field at all. So I'm going dot. I'm talking all purpose yards too. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Jalen. I'm like, I'm like strictly receiving yards, maybe 
all purpose, it's not even close. Hey, I, 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 that rookie, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what though, that rookie going he gonna be there for 17 weeks. Yeah, he is gonna he be gonna, there. Yeah, he's gonna be there. Weeks, <laughs> At 171 pounds, yeah, okay. Curtis Samuel already there, done missed bro. some of OTAs. Okay. <laughs> My man's, my I man's mean, got I don't say anything about Curtis Samuel. I'm not banking on a 171 pound receiver. I mean, uh, what Devonte Smith was healthy all year last year, wasn't he? Was he? Yeah, he played. He, a, he, he played like 15 games. Yeah, so I mean, that's not all 18. And he played. Early. <laughs> I mean, I haven't <laughs> seen Curtis Samuel yet, so I gotta see it to believe it. That shit is that's like fair. magic. That's fair. <laughs> it's like magic to me, that's bro. Fair. I gotta that's see fair. it to believe it. That's like one, Zach, what'd you think? Hey. Before Debo Samuel, there was Curtis Samuel. I mean, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, that's it. Oh, no, you were correct. You're correct. You're correct. You said it right. You said it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that's the truth, man. He, he, he was the blueprint. He was the blueprint. So. This is the blueprint. You're right. And when you're talking about all-purpose yards, man, and you guys were there. You already saw he's taking snaps out the backfield already. So, I mean, and that's what he's showing you all. So it might be a huge part of the offense. We're not. Yeah. We're just sleeping on it. It might be, mean? but he missed OTAs. What up, Hawk? This man missed OTAs. He's already missed some OTA practices. Oh, John, Jonathan <laughs> Sturgis. He's been in his office for thirty. No, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about for practice or knowledge. I'm saying he wasn't play. He missed OTAs because they were resting him because what was his hamstring he's was. Going. What is he going to get out of OTAs? No, I, I will no, say this. I I'm saying say this, I think I think we said the same thing out. last off season. I think he was held out because people kept tweeting about what they were doing with him in the back right. personally. Right. I think and he I was think held out because his groin is Everybody still bothering him. He <laughs> <laughs> was holding him out because Jalen was live oh, tweeting God. from OTAs yeah. and shit. Yeah, <laughs> well, all I'm saying is last year I heard about a groin thing in what June and said, "Oh, that won't be an issue." And then he missed the whole season. And I'm still hearing about stuff now, so I'm a whole, I'm not. They're not going to fool me again. Okay, I'm gonna have no expectations and hope that they surprise me. Hey, my man Tay yeah, said man. it's Jalen's fault that they was holding out uh, Curtis Samuel because Jalen was live tweeting from the OTA. Hey, hey, hey! The channel got a big buzz after that. Hell yes! <laughs> you gotta get it how you live, you man. I ain't mad right? at you. This is growing, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, him and Dax were double teaming. <laughs> <Zach. laughs> What's up? Johnny Sturgis it's said it's bro. Cam Sims year. Anybody agree? No. No. <laughs> I don't. Nah. nah. No. Cam Sims had his year in 2020. That was Cam Sims year. In, in all respect, because I've said this to the chat. All respect. All respect. I like when Cam his Sims. numbers. Call, when his I love numbers Cam Sims. On, all he's going to do is protect. I love Cam, Cam Sims. Sims is the epitome that. of argue. that young basketball team that is. Like two years from breaking out their entire <laughs> life. <laughs> like, yo, Cam you know that is like he's two years away from being two years away. From <laughs> oh, yes. Cam Son, like what? Like, but he he's didn't a break out in college. Like he was like wide receiver no, no. six at Bama. Bro, Cam been here longer than Terry McCorm, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's a he's a perfect like fifth receiver. You know, he's, he's, a great, he's great receiver. He's great, but yeah, breakout for him it already happened. <laughs> Okay, BC, BC said Diami could be our Gabriel Davis, but right, okay, boy. let's go back to the the, the Dotson versus Samuel <laughs> thing. Pascal, is you with me that it's you going with Dotson for both? I'm going with Dotson for both, yeah. Okay, yards and touchdown, Alex. Dotson and Samuel. Curtis Samuel, man, I gotta stop playing with Kirk Code, dog. I got to cut it out. <laughs> no, I agree. If he plays, it yeah. should be him. He got to start. You oh said you got to stop playing with him. He got to start playing. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to play. He's going to play. He's I need to see it. He's going to play, bro. He's going to play. Look, he'll get, more goal line, get the goal line. He'll get the He'll get the goal line. That's what I'm saying. I haven't yeah. seen him in our uniform, though. But I've seen it on the NFL level. I ain't seen nothing. No, on I agree. Yet. You right. You're no, no. Right. If he's healthy, it's easily him. Is he healthy, though? That's what I'm saying. I mean, we can put a little free wage on it, some push-ups or something. Oh, hell yeah. We, yeah, we got to put something on <laughs> Tailgate sure. push-ups, bro. Tailgate joints. You got to count them on the vlog. <laughs> uh, Tay, yards and touchdown. I'm going to say yards for... See? <laughs> yards I'm going to go with Kurt Samuel, man. 
That was crazy. That was crazy. This all season was just crazy. Bro. Like, I, it's just crazy. Johnny, you still you still remember that play time? I remember that jump, bro. It was crazy. That jump, bro. I can't say too much on it, but me and Terry was like, "Hey, yo, that it jump, was crazy." And then he mispracticed the next day. That's cool. <laughs> why did he have to be there? Like, no, he didn't no, miss it because he wasn't there. He was on the sideline. He was resting in an abundance of caution. Who? No one else was resting. Everybody else was resting. What are you talking about? Nobody like else four, was resting. It was like four people. That's what I'm saying. Like, he wasn't the only one. But we, we know who the leader was, of the cycling club is, though. That's cool. Like, it was like, like, I'm about to play clean. Oh, Look, not Reyes. I hear you. He was not the only one there, though. We ain't gonna say that. He wasn't the only one there, but he wasn't. Who else was resting? It wasn't a bunch of fully disgruntled, disgruntled Duran, disgruntled Duran. No, he wasn't the only one resting. Like I'm, I'm confused. But like, they said they he said his there? hamstring was tight. I'm just saying he was still having something was tight. Fast twitch athlete. That's what happened with fast twitch athletes. Yeah, and then he doesn't play. It's May. You stressing over something that's about to happen in September. Yep. Mm-hmm. I September, absolutely. I'll be stressing. But right now. I'm stressing it's now. It's I'm stressing now. now. It's July. I'm stressing now. I'm stressing now. I'm that's, 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 that's that Astron syndrome. That's that scoring red skin family type. Y'all got to get out hey, of here. Hey, man. I'm just nah. cautious, I'm cautiously <laughs> excited to see him play, and my fingers are crossed. I almost knock on wood every time I say Curtis Samuel's name. It's like saying Candyman or something. Paul, Paul Richards, they got y'all scoring, man. Yeah, bro, that number 10 <laughs> scares me, bro. I got to get, get rid of that. No, but that, Curtis Samuel got me scoring, too. <laughs> <laughs> I seen what Curtis Samuel do. Man. I ain't seen what Jahad does. Get his ass. Like I said, we can put a weight on that joint. Let me know. We can definitely. But look, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I don't Does anybody right. have a split on too. it? Like one for yards and one for touchdown? Or are we all just unanimous with this shit? <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why I can't give Jahad touchdowns, man. I'm going to holler at Jahad about that in a second. There's a reason why I can't give it to him. Okay. You go okay. We'll get to that. Let's go you next. Like eight rushing touchdowns. I already know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna get to our next either or real quick. Speaking of Curtis Samuel, we got two more guys at the moment in the Ashburn Cycling Club. Who's gonna play more games for the Washington Commanders in 2022? Oh, Chase Young. Logan Thomas or Curtis Sidefield Samuel? Who plays in the most games for the Commanders in 2022? Pascal, start. I'm, I, I'm going to say Curtis Samuel because hey! <laughs> I got to say Curtis because Chase and Logan are coming off ACLs. And Logan Logan didn't have surgery till like three weeks late because because they didn't have a, a head trainer. Because Ashburn would be Ashburn. Anyway. Yeah. And then, you know, honestly, I think Chase and um, Logan are going to start on the pup. So I think they're both at least missing six weeks. So I'll say, although I am stressing off Curtis Samuel, he's not coming off an ACL. Jalen? I got some some shit to get off my chest about this one. Because about two months ago, when it was reported that Chase Young had his graph taken from his other leg, and I tweeted it or whatever, they're like, dude, you're just trying to stir up controversy or whatever. No, bro, this dude had, like, reconstructive ACL surgery. Like, that wasn't a normal ACL surgery. So with that being said, you know I'm rolling with Curtis. I can't just debate for 10 minutes and then not roll with him. So I'm going to go with Curtis. But I think Chase is last. I honestly think that Chase might spend that full uh, pup duration. What is that? I think it's the first six weeks, right? I think he might spend that full uh, time on the pup list. Bro. Ooh, definitely. That I'm, hearing. Like, that, I, I, I'm not stupid. I know how normal like ACL surgeries are. They usually take the graph from the same leg. When I heard mm-hmm. it was taken from my opposite leg, that was raised for concern. Like, I, 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 my concern was justified. Trust me. <laughs> so, who playing the most games this year? Curtis. Curtis. Okay, you feel confident in saying that. So we got two Curtis Samuels so far. Anybody? First of all, before I go next, is anybody picking anyone that's not Curtis Samuel on this list? Everybody's. We're all picking Curtis Samuel. I don't think Logan Thomas gonna play a game this year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, Tay. I, I do have low expectations for Logan Thomas. If if that's the case, that's the end for Logan. 
I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> you're right. That's you're right. Like, I, I, I think we're along the same lines as you, Tay. I think that if he does come back, he's going to be a shell of himself. Like, he's yeah. And he's older. Off of ACL, that's like a basketball type. You know exactly. What? And then he's going to, you know, he, right it's going to, if even if he does play, is ACL still healing? It's going to, he's probably going to make up for it somewhere else and get injured somewhere else. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go Chase Young plays the most games out of this group because – Logan like, Thomas. So. Logan Thomas is go. banged. I know. I, I'm. I, I think he needs to play the most games out of this group because he needs to wipe the stench of last season off more than anybody. Because he's supposed to be the face of this franchise where we drafted him at. And year three is huge. He's in the lab with Von Miller. Seeing those pictures makes me happy. We may actually see an array of pass rush moves from yeah, him. Yeah. I'm going to go Chase Young because even if he does miss that initial six games, that means he plays 11, and 11 might be more than Curtis Samuel. (laughs) (laughs) I hope I'm wrong, though. I hope hope they all play. I hope they all play as much as possible but are not rushed back. But if it's not Curtis Samuel, then – that contract is a fucking nightmare. Tay. No, I agree. I mean that 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 contract is gonna be a nightmare, but I think I think Curtis is gonna play probably fifteen plus games this year. Personally, I think I think he'll be good to go. And why do you think that, Tay? Curious. This offseason, I mean, he looked he looked good. I mean, I just think, you know, last year it was he was supposedly hurt. When he signed in the up. off season, that's what I'm saying. Like they were yeah. reporting that he was hurt in the off season. Yeah. That's so, like do y'all remember the report that like Washington was the only team to yep. give him a high offer because every other team heard he was hurt. Yep. That's why I'm not as concerned. Exactly. Hell yeah, man. I, hey, we need it. The offense needs it. We need that versatility. Absolutely. And I, anybody, Zach, you got anything else to add to this, man? Uh, no. Nah. Um, for sure, for sure. I mean, it better be Curtis. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, like you said, those other guys have torn ACLs and they tore it midway through the season, late yep. through the season. Later, so, late, yeah, later. Mid, mid to the late. These guys are yeah. starting. Week Chase one. was like nine or it's ten. Not happening. Yeah. Not. So, um, Curtis had all off season to nurse a groin. I mean. He better start the most. If so. he doesn't, then that should be that's gonna be problems yeah. for us, man, for sure. Alex, close it out. Um, man, listening to Jalen, man, I really had a lot of optimism for when Chase. No, 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 don't let me influence. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah, nah. L- listen, bro, because I, I really did want to say Chase, you know, and like I know if Curtis is playing, I'm definitely expecting at the bare minimum, like you said, 15 games. That's a win for Curtis. He can go ahead and knock that. It's crazy what a season does for you. You know, he'll get that old title with being injury I'm not going to say we can play a full season, but damn, man. What does that also mean for this defense? I got me over here really thinking, man, like if Chase's not going to be around for the first six seven, six weeks, it's not a death sentence by any stretch, but God damn, bro. Like, it might get it might get real dicey real fast, well, and that's going to man. Like you want that production? Are you talking about somebody who and you all all the while we watching Joe Burrow flinging it doing his thing? I was like, all right, bro, wait, where the fuck is that? Watching too? Herbert, watching yeah, Herbert do it too. And just like yeah, you know, my, my might be watching Tua like do it say, too. I know we like to say revisionist history because Chase was yeah. the right pick, but I'm looking at that motherfucker Jay Herbo down in Los Angeles right now, and he's different. What does oh. what does because I don't ever think that we're gonna go back and redraft and take Chase over Justin Herbert. But what does Chase have to do this year to make you be like, all right, all right, all right I, I can live with that pick. Double Honestly, he needs to be like sex. Double digit sex. I don't even think that, I think like thirteen and a half, fourteen. <laughs> yeah, and like he needs to objectively be what top five at his position. We can do double if he plays half the season. Yeah, yeah cool. If he plays. 11 games. I'm, I'm talking. He has to make game changing plays. Yeah. Usually, yeah. Michael Parsons. Yeah. 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 He needs to, yeah, yeah. yeah. Michael There we go, Tay. He needs to be yeah. Michael Parsons. Facts. Yeah. 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 That's well, not like, even, even close. I was a better pass rusher than Chase in September of last year. But. 
This shit is crazy. A part time pass rusher with more bag. That's wild to me. Maybe he's humble. He's putting in the work. I'm glad to see him move on. Right it's good to see him out there. I haven't been seeing the eBay commercials anymore. How much, is, how much can he do out there, though, on one ACL? Like, I love yeah, we, none of us ever saw the eBay commercials. Like, how much is he doing? <laughs> I think that commercial never saw the light of day. It never saw the light of day, but he missed OTAs for it. But, before, <laughs> but that perfectly segues us into the next topic. Before we get to it, Dylan asks, when it's time to pay Young and Sweat, do you think we're able to keep both? And if not, who do you think will pay? And who goes? Alex, you, you look like you're ready to start it off on Man, this one. Ron knows exactly what the hell he had. I know when he looks at Montez Sweat, and I'm not calling him this by any stretch. That's his baby Julius Peppers right there, man. There's no way you're sitting up here thinking, oh, I'm about to let Chase and Montez go. Because these guys, when they're healthy, they definitely can't produce. We need to see it on the field. But everything Ron said up until this date is about keeping these guys together. He's not just thinking about, oh, yeah, we spent this money here with cars. Yeah, I got to pay Terry. He knows he has to pay Chase. He knows he has to pay Sweat. He's going to do everything in his power to make sure he keeps both. If there was anyone that was ever expendable, we already spoke about it. Matt, he's gone. Deron Payne, he's next. So you could just do the process elimination there. He definitely wants both guys to do it. And I think they'll do everything in their power to keep both. Okay. Pascal. Yeah, it's like from a practical perspective, because I don't think either Montez or Chase are going to put themselves in a position to be eligible for a top of their position contract. But to me, Chase and Montez, Montez especially since he's been in the league a year longer, are on track to be part of that day one wave of free agents that gets overpaid based on their potential not their production and like he obviously has the potential like like you know preston smith essentially give him preston smith contract but can you give both of those out both based on potential not based on production but then also chase young is a face of this franchise you like his leadership more than montez because montez is not a leader so i i don't know if i see them keeping both but uh I'm, I think I'm going to say no, honestly. Mm. I think <clears throat> they're going to try to keep both, but... I think they're going to get outbid. Uh, I, yeah, I think I think Sweat's the one that ends up getting out, and they're going to keep what? Chase. And I think it's for more than what they more do than on the field. More than on the field, reasons. yeah. Yeah, I think... We, we know who owns this team, and I think they... Even if he doesn't live up to what we want to see, I think they're going to put on burgundy-coated lenses and paint a future of Chase Young that does not exist, even if it hasn't been shown yet. Like they're going to try to sell themselves a dream with Chase Young because they still see him as the generational chess piece defensive player. So I'm going to say it's going to be it would be Chase Young out of those two for those reasons. Jalen? Um, I think you are forgetting something. That like by the time Chase's rookie extension is up, that new TV deal will be signed, so the cap salary cap will go up to about oh, like, like crazy, almost like three hundred million dollars, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that they'll be um, capable of signing both of them, and in terms of that, I think that they will. But I agree with y'all that I, um, I think it does. It, it is going to come to a time where, and I don't think it's anywhere near it because they love each other. Like they're always around each other. Every time we've seen them, they're always together. But I think that Montez is going to get tired of living in Chase's shadow at some point because I think at this point, I think that he's the better player at this very moment, um, and he doesn't get respected as such or recognized as such. So um, I think that his temperament has a lot to do with whether um, he reached out to Washington. I want to touch on that, Jalen, before we move ahead. I'm hoping and praying that if it does come to fruition, that whatever Warren Sapp imparted to these gentlemen about them eating as wolves together, being as a pack, I really hope that Montez does take on that. Because like Jaden said, if he gets tired of living under Chase's light, that means these guys ain't hustling to all eat together. You see what I'm saying, man? Like, if they're all humming as one and the vision of what Coach Del Rio, Coach Rivera sees for them, what Warren Sapp seen in them, if they can all hunt as one, <clears throat> then, then we will really see all that first-round talent really start coming to light. I hope it doesn't boil down to somebody being – Oh, I am tired of being this asshole. Show. Nah, man. Y'all need to do this together so we can stack these W's. Yeah, it's more than and, just stuff. Me and Pascal was just like venting in the chat the other day because we were just like, don't y'all, can't y'all, like, they have to perform this year. There, there's four first round picks. Yeah. One of them and was the, second, the second pick of the 
fucking draft. Like, there's no reason for the defense to be regressing. We don't yeah. need an elite secondary if we have these horses up front. It's time that we see them live to their potential, right? Yeah, and it's like none of them were like first round picks and you say but they shouldn't have been. I mean all of them were rightfully first round no, picks. Davis is in that right. Game. They've all shown why they were drafted in the first round, but they haven't played up to well, Jonathan Allen has and yeah. Chase did for the second half of his rookie year, but you know, the consistency is what the issue is like they drafted four first rounders, but they're not playing together like four first rounders. They're playing like a first and a few few second a few fifth, sixth or sevenths. So I don't really know how you fix that because it really doesn't seem like a talent issue. It seems more like a cohesion scheming issue or philosophy issue more than a talent issue. I agree, man. I agree. So next question, though. Either or. I mean, not not either or. is a stat leader. Who's going to lead the team in sacks this year? Mm. Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat. Easy, is easy for you? No, nah, um, I think it's going to be um, a competition between him and Jonathan Allen. But I think that it's um, – if you look at Montez's numbers last year, he was fifth in, like, quarterback pressures, and he played, like, 11 games. That's kind of yeah. crazy. So if he can convert those into sacks, um, yeah. And I think that what does Montez good. need to do to take a, a, the next step for you? Work um, on have a more, I was about to say have a, a more steady motor. Yeah, um, motor. Do the freaky stuff that we've seen him do in splash plays, do it in play in and play out because we've seen him do some freaky stuff. Like, if you guys can go back and look at like the interception return against the Cowboys, go back and look at that play. Like, that's not a normal play by any means. Yeah. Um, the bad down that he had against Pittsburgh, I know I'm going back to a lot of 2020 stuff, but dude is a freak for sure. So, if he plays up to his capabilities, yeah, and I think that he will this season. Yeah, I yeah. think if Montez plays the full season his floor should be 12 sacks mm -hmm. just because i mean he made some plays last year honestly he was on pace to have double digit sacks last year if not for the injury then the personal matter that came up so because if he's battling with john allen john, you know he's john allen's a tackle montez is an end a lot of sacks for john allen is is not nearly enough sacks for montez sweat saying, so problem, yeah if they're competing for for totals then really jonathan allen won because those are more meaningful but I think it'll be Montez because he finds a way. He ends up getting to the quarterback somehow and still, you know, even though it doesn't seem like it. But he does. He gets a lot of pressures. Okay. Alex. Um, I'd argue that Montez is closer to 13 and a half sacks than Chase is. How Jalen was alluding to earlier. For one, he should be the one person who actually should see more of an output because he'll be starting from day one. You know, he's the one person who should shine and thrive with the added depth. Yeah, you know, and even FA about on this side and, other, and and guys in the trenches, he should be the one like, all right, now I'm shining. Like even though Chase isn't here, y'all drafted me for a reason, you know. Like he should be up a good six or seven by the time this guy gets back, and then we'll just add more fire to the mix. If anything, um, yeah, that that would be nice for Montez. I, I would hope at least. Zach, you got anybody else? Or are you going Montez as well? Yeah, I, I hate to pile on here, but it's pretty obvious to me that it should be Montez Sweat because, I mean, he is an edge, obviously. And, I mean, Chase is not starting week one. So, by default, he's your guy right off the bat. So, I mean, I think 13 isn't really a lofty number by any means. I think that's very accurate. So, okay, Montez Sweat for me. F.A. Abada. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's out there. Man. It's not impossible. Production not is on not. Par with Chase's, but I think if Chase miraculously plays the full season, I think he leads the team in sacks. But it doesn't look like it's trending that way at all. So. I'm going to have to keep it unanimous. It's going to be Montez Sweat. If Montez Sweat don't lead this team in sacks this year, what do we it's need him for? It's a problem. Yeah, exactly. What, what yeah. do we need him for if he's the edge rusher that plays the majority of the season and fucking F.A. Abada has more sacks than him? Bro. <laughs> like, bro. If, if it's not sacks, if it's not sacks, it needs to be passes battered at the line of scrimmage, maybe even a pick or two amongst the defensive line because he's very capable of wrecking shit in a game plan he could definitely yeah. do it. like Jalen said it starts with a steady motor consistently consistently we can get that yeah 
If Montez had Chase's motor, it'd be a wrap. It'd be a problem. Imagine if they get start using their hands. My goodness. It, it, it would be a beautiful man i'm tired of talking about what they can be i want to see them be it this year bro like can everybody just like why do i feel more optimistic about the offense when the defense is being built for four years now you know there's a ceiling to washington defensive ends though they can only be so good they can't be great brian arakpo ryan kerrigan <laughs> monta sweat chase young they're, they're not always gonna be bad, but they they're not going to be bad <laughs> yeah because I mean, at this point, would you say which which duo is better, Arapco Arapo Kerrigan, or yeah. Montez and and, and Chase? Kerrigan. The first one, right? So, far. but like they weren't great; they were just solid. But 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 Sweat and Chase are ten times more talented athletically. Upside is there, but upside and potential ain't shit. But untapped into the talent, so I need to see it. I need to see it this year, bro. Like, I can't – they can't be out here with some skimp-ass sack number by the time the season – like, if they both trotting out at, by, at, at week 18 with eight and six sacks, bro, we, we got to have a conversation, Man, bro. start over. <laughs> we going to have to have a real conversation about taking an edge rusher in the first round next year, bro. And that's – sad to even think but Sheen wants to know which team do y'all have not living up to the media hype since we're always getting dogged on um I think I think Philly would be an easy answer here but I think it gotta be Buffalo because mm. Buffalo people are talking them in the Super Bowl right now <laughs> I don't know if I'm like I, I kind of want to put them in there too but are they really the best team in the NFL? Right there. I like. Uh, I don't know. Are they the best team in the NFL? <laughs> like on paper, it looks beautiful. But are they the best team in the NFL, bro? Like they, they like, for them to live up to expectations, they at their floor has to be Super Bowl appearance this year. I'm not sure yeah. they go to yeah. the Super Bowl this year. I got one. I got one too. Go ahead, Pascal. I think I think the Titans are done. I don't think they're their first seed in the AFC anymore. I think they're I think they're a lower seed, if that. Are they getting hyped in the media though? I think a lot of people. Are, I think that I think a lot of people are writing the death the the, 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 the death date for the Titans in the media for sure. And I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. The team I'm gonna go with is the Raiders. Um, mm, the yeah, Raiders. that's a good one. They getting a lot of hype, uh, and I see a lot of empty holes. Um, and we saw what Josh McDaniels did the last time he was a head coach. That that the damn near whole organization fell apart um, when, he was, when he was in Denver. Um, so yeah, um, I don't think that the Derek Carter, Devontae Adams connection is going to be as good as the A. Rod and Devontae, um, as some people are are projecting it to be, um, and they're freaking foolish but chase young's yeah. rookie year was not better than michael parsons man don't do that guy like i love i love, I love chase it was it, not it wasn't it, it, was, wasn't. it wasn't even like com comparable to be perfectly honest bro how do we feel about trey lance leading the 49ers man because uh, i mean i feel i mean they're hyping him up because it's kyle shanahan obviously I mean, he's I think they hit on the offense, but I, I think he hits. Play. I think a lot of people are writing him off, but I think he hits, man. Me too. I mean, you're going to plan mm. for him. You got to plan for him this time. So, I mean, it's not some guy that just starts one week and nobody knows what he's doing. I mean, he's the guy. I think he's going to light shit up this year. It's what everybody thinks, but. Like, no, no, no. A lot of people I'm think it's going to fail. I feel like a lot of people are, are very low on Trey Lance, bro. I'm hey. I, I'm riding with the Trey, the Trey Lance ship. I think I see a lot of people. Kyle is going to flex his balls now that he doesn't have a limited quarterback. Like, he is going to let him hang this year, bro. Alex, what you think? Y'all can hang me out of the drive, man. Kansas City can go ahead and pack it up, bro. Mm. I don't mean they going to live up to the billing, baby. I'm mm. not saying Reek is that heavy of a presence on that offense. He might be. There's certain things you can't account for, man. I know they got Kelts. I know they definitely still strong, but You're not happy not about Juju? Enough. You're not size for Juju as a chief? Who? Juju Sky Moore. <laughs> 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 Who? They're trying to replace Tyreek with Corey Coleman. 
Don't forget nah, though, they have football nah. god as their quarterback though, so I they mean, always hey, have a shot. All, all respect to him, and I know Andy is definitely a dog himself. Um, hey, look, bro, we played him. It wasn't shit to be afraid of that motherfucker Sunday Sunday afternoon, was it? If we <laughs> had mean, a quarterback, we would have won. Hey, <laughs> if we had, hey, you know, and I'm not sitting up here trying to shit on Pat in any way, but uh, he's had his moments when he looked human. You know, and it, it, it doesn't help to not have somebody who could just say, fuck it, let me just toss it five, ten yards, let him go ahead and handle the rest of it. But he's still got arm, still got a can, he still got Kelsey. But it might not be enough. Maybe Reek was the piece. No, I think Tyreek – Tyreek was, was, I think, more special with the Chiefs than people maybe realize. I mean, some of those plays he made was just Mahomes, Pat Mahomes getting him the ball and then Tyreek doing the rest, and that's gone now. So, like, he made it easier for, for Patrick Mahomes, kind of like Matthew Stafford with Calvin Johnson his first few years. Mm-hmm. What is Green Bay going to be this year? Not good. Mid. Oh, no. I don't know. They probably <laughs> still win, like, 12 games, though. Yeah. It's Rogers. That. There's no, there's no it is Rodgers, but you know they've. <laughs> I think they're in. I think they're in the ten to eleven ish. Yep, and an early playoff exit per usual. If they play the 49ers, then for sure. <laughs> it's insane that Rodgers has been to one Super Bowl, bro. Yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> it's That's wild crazy because it's that. like, all right, we're 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 dying for a franchise quarterback. You could have one for fifteen years, and and still you only get one Super Bowl. Man, that shit, that shit is crazy. But to go to quarterbacks, but to go to quarterbacks, like you know what I'm saying. Like, I'm gonna set the number at 28. Give me a push over or under. Is 28 the right number? You going over or you going under? I'm definitely pushing the over, and I'm pushing the Carson is definitely gonna be the first quarterback in 55 years here to throw for 30 touchdowns. Kirk almost did it with 29, 55. So, Sonny Jurgensen, two of our lifetimes, pretty much. God damn it! And that's the last time someone threw for 30 touchdowns. I'm smashing the over and take that money to Vegas. He's throwing 30 touchdowns in this offense, um, Alex. Hell yeah, man. Yes, Carson is taking that in his sleep. The one thing I love about it, though, as decent as the run game could be with Brian Robinson and Gibson in the goal line, Carson, when you look at some of his highlights from last year, he was a dog in the red zone, bro. Like, he was throwing absolute lasers. And I feel like it just opens it up because you just can't focus in or we're going to try to stack the marks. Not that you had to, but there's just a plethora of, wep- a plethora of weapons. And Carson has targets that are big. He has possession guys. He's going to get it done. Charlie, don't play with us in the red zone, man. It's going to get nasty. I think we're going to be one of the higher efficient teams in the red zone this year. And how many? Okay. So how many touchdowns are you going? How many are you calling? I, I'll give him 32. I was going to say 33. Okay. Okay, B. Smitty said – he said 33 as well. Nine picks. Josh Sanders said over. Zach, over or under? And how many touchdowns? Man, y'all going to hate me, bro. It's okay. Be, be honest, bro. Speak I'm going truth. under, man. I'm I'm going under. Uh, I think I think 27, 26. Um, I think there's going to be emphasis on the run, man. Robinson, um, Gibby. I just think um, they're going to try to run through your face, and um, I think 27, 26 is probably around where he's going to be. I would like I would like him to throw more than thirty. That'd be fun, but I don't see it. Uh, you don't see it? Okay, so I just think I think they'll try to protect and limit those mistakes that he had in um, Indianapolis, and I think they're going to focus on running the ball more, just with Robinson. And we heard that they're going to try to go back to the um, to the dual set running backs like they had in Carolina. I just I see them trying to run more. So would you consider if you predict if it if it plays out how you just predict, would you consider his first year in Washington a success? Sure. I mean I'm not focused really on statistics what his stats say. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like can he distribute the ball? Can he take care of the ball? Can he maximize this offense and stretch the field? You know what I'm saying? Like how long has it been since we've seen a quarterback throw a guy open here? I mean, years. 
It's been a minute, man. It's been it's I been mean, about not, six. I, <laughs> when we got Carson Wentz, I wasn't expecting you know Russell Wilson type. I agree. The Rams you know, are the best, by the play. way. I just I just want efficient. Okay, Pascal. I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go right at like thirty-one, partially because you've got the extra game, and I think. I agree with you, Zach, about there being, you know, they want to be able to run the ball, but I don't think they'll be able to run the ball as well as the Colts did last year with Jonathan Taylor. And even with that number one rushing attack, Carson Wentz still had 27 touchdowns with a lesser receiver core. So I think I'm going to go right at 30-31 because I think that I think that he would, like he's just kind of going to be on track for that and that the running game won't steal enough of those touchdowns from them with the 17-game schedule. What's good, Miz? Okay, I hear you. I hear you. So just over. Jalen. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to go over because he had 27 touchdowns last year with not as many receiving threats. Oh, yeah. I I mean, it's pretty pretty simple. And with that 17th game, and I think we're going to let him be more of himself here. Like, he was more of a hand-the-ball-off guy. I think we're going to get the run game going, but it's not going to be on the level of a Jonathan Taylor. So, I think we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna be like, we're gonna be bombs over Baghdad, like Jalen said, and it's going to be some games where he's throwing 40, 45 passes. I know how Scott Turner gets down, bro. And Scott will abandon that motherfucker. He wants run. to throw. He wants to throw. <laughs> he will let that. He wants to throw. <laughs> when, he see that, let when he see that right rocket get going, bro, he will abandon that motherfucker. Fucking run, <laughs> like, yeah. for sure. He wants to, he wants to throw, for sure. So I'm definitely going with the over for that. And now, before we go ahead and cap it off, um, I'm gonna do the drawing now for the mini helmet and the winner of tonight's Washington Commanders mini helmet is going to be weakest drum roll in the history of drum rolls. <laughs> Chris Mahoney, you are going to be the winner of the mini helmet. My God, Chris Mahoney. Yes, nice, nice. Congrats. Man. You're going to get a Washington command. Go ahead and show it one more time, Pascal. You're getting one of these bad boys, the sexiest helmet in the history of this franchise. No debate. <laughs> but, yeah, man, you'll be getting this mini helmet. It, like, do, Not that up. one, but your own. Do something nice with it. Yo, if if somebody if you live in Woodbridge, by the way, Sports Nation is selling like a regular size replica for like one sixty, and that John is beautiful, bro. He was like, "Oh, this ain't the authentic." I was like, "That shit look real to me." I it seen looked, that actual good. helmet, and that joint look. Y'all, I sent y'all the picture, right? It looked good. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah, but shout out to my guy Chris Mahoney for you're getting your mini helmet. Go ahead and message me, DM me on either Facebook Messenger or on Twitter. We'll get your information. We'll get you taken care of. But to close out the show, let's see how are we gonna end things, y'all. Like let's how hit would... them rookies? Let's hit them rookies real quick. Rookies. Real quick. Let's close it out with the rookies. Okay. 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 Two topics for the rookies. We're gonna go. Who's gonna be the best rookie on the team? But before we get to that. What do we need to see from our fifth round draft pick, Sam Howe? Because we've done potted a bunch of time. We done went an hour and 38 minutes into a training camp preview, and we have not talked about the rookie quarterback, bro. What do we need to see from him in year one with no expectations to actually get on the field this year? Um, not much. I just expect him to be a quality NFL. Like he looked like he belonged in the NFL in the preseason. Like I said, I'm not expecting much this year. Um, there's a reason why he was still available in the fifth round while the talent is evident. Mm-hmm. Um, let him bake. Let him bake. But I'm hoping he can establish like a connection to his college teammate Deami Brown in the preseason. And like I said, I just don't want him to look like a deer in headlights in the preseason. That's literally my only expectation. Yeah, same as Jalen. I want to just hear good reports out of camp and then see good things preseason. Because with these guys, with these late-round quarterbacks, it's like you can know pretty quickly whether there's something there or nothing there. So I just want to think there might be something there based off his play, and then at some point we'll find out. So I just don't want him to look terrible and just throwing picks left and right, look like he understands what he's doing. I, like, I, I'll chime in real quick. 
you're playing third stringers and you're coming into a into the league as a, you're not a raw prospect. So don't look like a raw prospect yeah. and look like you belong in some versus third stringers. I'm good to go because it's year one and there's like, let's pray to God he doesn't see the field because he, he should not have to. But the way things are set up here as a Washington fan, we are the kings of playing three to four quarterbacks in a season. Let's hope we don't have to see it. Alex, go ahead, man. All right, two things for me. I definitely want to see the moxie. You know, when you, you watch the Sands and you can tell he has a certain swagger in the pocket. Like, once he's rolling, I just want to be able to see that just as far as the eye test when he's on the field. And number two, he doesn't have to do this. But it'd be dope to see him possibly snatch that number two spot with depth chart. I feel like that's an attainable goal for the season. Taylor Honey is in front of him. Yes, he knows the play, but like the back of his hand. But he's not leaps and bounds better than you. So if at some point during the season he somehow supplants him at the number two spot, that's a win for him in in, in, in the season. I think, and as far as his development is concerned. Yeah, man, let that boy bake in the oven, man. Pre preheat it and just let it go. Like we put him in the slow cooker. Like we don't yeah. need him. We don't need him anytime soon, bro. Zach, <laughs> what do you think? What do we need to see? Or if we need to see anything at all? Not much, man. If he can take care of the ball in preseason and show that he has some understanding of the offense coming straight in, it would be a win. I mean, other than that, don't be a distraction. We got enough of them. I mean, <laughs> otherwise, you don't really need to see much from him. I mean. Hopefully Carson is competent enough to uh, keep this thing going. I know earlier someone said that how would uh, usurp Wentz by week six, but I can't see Ron ever giving up on his guy. There would be no good you know at how that. how Ron he does. So. That would, like, our season would have to be an absolute shit show for Ron Sam Howe to be playing in October. Bruh, <laughs> what are we going to be talking about if Sam Howe was playing in October, bruh? That's <laughs> kind of wicked, bruh. We probably had one in five. <laughs> oh, and six. Wentz and Heineke both hurt. I think it's probably boycotting the stadium, talking about that's fire, what, Ron, all types of crazy shit. That's what Adam shit. Rink says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Adam Rank, he said he had to start in 0-5. 0-8. 0-8, 0-8, oh my God. I mean, when he had us going 3-13, and 13, what did we do? We went 3-13. and 13. Uh, He did. This is a different, little different roster, but yeah, he did, you know. I got some you know. for y'all, man. Alex. Yeah, I know you said uh, between Curtis and Han, who's going to happen with touchdowns. This is my sleeper. He's not even a sleeper, bro. I just think that Cole Turner is going to be a red zone demon. I'm telling you right now, I, I don't know one. if I want to say six or seven touchdowns. If I'm saying seven, I'm going to go ahead and say eight. He is Carson's type of guy. That Why do I think he's the starter, bro? And, 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 <laughs> I'm I just saying, like, like he, the looks that he's going to get down there and Carson's going to look for him because without Logan being there, we know John Bates is solid, but that's a big target down there. Right. He oh, knows man. he knows how to use his body. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is why I'm saying in the red zone, he's going to let it fly. He, he like there's no not one DB or safety that's gonna pair up with his size and is doing too much for him. He's gonna have a field day, bro. I mean, that's my question on that's my question on the tight ends because if if Logan's not doing much, is it Bates or is it Turner? Which one's your? I think it's I think it's Cole. Give me Cole. It's Cole, bro. Give me Cole. Yeah, I think it's Cole. You need. I think it's like Cole too. At the tight end position in that offense, he, he is that. His catch rate catch is insane. But let's say let's say Bates and Turner explode. Or at least they got it locked down. What does that mean for Thomas? Uh, nice. Let him sit there it's a wrap. Write it's him right. off into the sunset. Yeah, you, thank you for your service, my <laughs> Hey, exactly. And Ryan and Coach still look good. Best, best of luck in your endeavors, yeah. and you have a beautiful family, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> we got a converting so, tight end at like 30 years yeah, old. He, so it's like, label. you know. Yeah. And Ron does not look bad by signing because they got everything they could. He looked the part when they signed him. Look the part. I it like awesome. Logan Thomas. I think we size him as a fan base a little bit. The, side, the fan base does size Logan Thomas for sure. I think they, <laughs> we size everybody in this damn organization. Man, I, we I got Charles Little Jr. Is Trent Williams, Williams in the eyes of some people, bro. Like he's a nice guy. You know him and his wife cool as hell. Not you know bad. What I'm Not bad. He's solid. But... 
Not hey, a book. Remember that circus fumble, man, where we fumbled it like eight times, <laughs> and Logan missed that thing. Yeah, that son. Ever since then. And then son. finally, he won my good graces back. But why didn't he just knock the ball out of bounds? That son, that play bro. still disgusts me, bro. <laughs> that was like just... top ten maddest yeah. I've ever been. That was a <laughs> was trying to like tiptoe him. Yeah. Why was he trying to pick it up? <laughs> Just knock it out of bounds. All right, to close it out, rookie class. Who's going to be our most productive rookie this season, not named Jahan Dotson? And who's going to be the most disappointing rookie of the draft class? I want two answers. Most disappointing, most productive, not first round pick of the class. Give him to me. Let's go, Brian Robinson. For which one, best? Ye- oh, they're two different. Best and most productive are oh, different. No, 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 no. Most productive. That's not a first round pick, and the most disappointing. Oh, that's right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Brian Robinson for most productive. Most disappointing. Mm. Uh, let's say. Let's say for Darian Mathis for his, his rookie season. Just doesn't show us much. Damn, that, that would just continue our streak of second round pick just nightmares, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, we should know. almost be banned from picking in the second round. At just trade point. up or trade out. <laughs> Hell yeah, Jalen, who you got? Uh, most productive uh, to agree with Alex, probably Cole Turner, uh, because I see there is an opportunity for him to take a stranglehold on that tight end position. Uh, most disappointing. Jahad Dawson. Ooh. Ooh. And and by most disappointing, give me the give me the rookie year numbers for him. Um I I don't really think in terms of numbers, just listening to like y'all and just listening to watching the commander community. Y'all know I've all like I've I put it out there that I think like Diami outproduces him this season. And I don't think he's gonna have a bad rookie year by any means. Um, but just in terms of like a lot of you guys' expectations, I think we're gonna temper them a little bit, um, and that's why I think it's gonna be disappointing. But not in terms of you know a first year receiver and things like that. Just in terms of the fan base expectations with some of the news coming out of minicamp and everything. Like yeah, Jonathan Sturgis really believes Cam Sims is about to go for like forty catches this year, man. He really <laughs> believes it, bro. I hope, I hope he got you on payroll, my guy. It would be nice. <laughs> It would be uh, nice, but I feel like if he is cooking, that means someone's either disappointing or someone's injured. But Alex, who you got? I'm definitely going with Cole Turner as the most productive. Uh, I guess it's easy to kind of say for Darian, but I'm going to just go ahead and say Brian Robinson because right now, even though he does have a clear cut role, maybe he's the third down guy, it is a uh, running back by committee room. Uh, his chances are going to come, but I can see a lot of that being by the hot hat. It could be Gibson, it could be, I don't want to say JD, but there isn't any clear path to see him getting 700 plus yards. So I'm not going to say it's disappointing, but he just might not have the kind of season we're hoping to see out of him. Yep, and uh, go ahead and close us out, Zach. Uh, most productive, I'm agreeing with Alex here, man. I think I think Cole Turner, I think um, with Logan not being here starting, he's going to explode right off the bat. Um, most disappointing. Let's go uh, let's go Percy Butler. Let's say if you're asking a lot of him to be, you know, that Buffalo nickel or we're hoping maybe he looks a little lost. I mean, this is based off nothing. I mean he could very well just take to it and run with it, but it is asking a lot of, you know, a young guy to play multiple positions and things like that. Yep, I'm going to go Cole Turner for most productive and for most disappointing. I'm also go for Darian Mathis. Like, I think he could be a space eater. He could make an impact, but I don't think his impact is going to be quite Matthew Ioannidis in year one, even though we took him in the second round. And Ioannidis was like a fifth round pick out of Temple. I just, I don't know. I don't know what he is. I need to see it. I saw what he did at Bama. I don't know how he fits into the equation of things yet. 
I'm a more of a wait and see approach type thing, but that's what I got for right now. I think Percy Butler is going to be a productive rookie for us. And I think this is going to end up being a solid draft class, but we shall see. All I know is I need to see Jamin Davis take a fucking step in year two, or that was a fucking drastically bad pick, but I'm ready to get on the camp in a couple weeks. Hopefully the team lets us know what days are confirmed that we can go to camp so we can link up at camp and get there. This fucking lottery system thing. I don't know what's going on with that, but man, y'all, we, we can get to the part where y'all plug y'all stuff, plug your social media, and we can get out of here for the night. We went for almost two hours, bro. It was a successful pod. We fought through the echoes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everybody for rocking through the echo. It was a, it was a it was a rough first forty seven minutes of pod, but we pushed through that yeah. shit. And we and personality thrives at the end of the day. Oh, Pascal, yep. let them know where to find you, man. At Tay and Todd Podcast on Twitter and Tay and Todd Podcast on YouTube. Give us a follow. Give us a subscribe. And uh, yeah, ride with us through the season. It's gonna be a fun one. Indeed, Jalen. At Bleeding Ben G, at Bleeding Berg, me and go on Instagram at B L E E D I N G B N G. Our Twitter spelled a tad bit different at B L E E D I N B N G. So there's only one G in our Twitter handle. Um, we're available on all podcast platforms. Search us on YouTube. Subscribe, like, follow. <laughs> like Todd said, I'm excited for this season as well. Alex, let them know where to find you, my guy. Uh, on Twitter, H U G zero underscore P O L zero. It's rock and roll, ready for the season. Zach. At Burgundy Bones with a Z, not an S. Uh, <laughs> go flame me there for the echo. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they said the Echo stream. I'm going to miss this, man. Shout out to my boys in the group chat for always holding it down. We're gonna be on it. We're gonna be in that joint roasting and going like shit tonight after this. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting my shit on silent. <laughs> <laughs> well, do not disturb for real. Oh, but shit. appreciate everybody for kicking it, rocking with us. Shout out to my guy Chris Mahoney for winning the helmet. You about to say something, Jalen? Nah, I said for sure. Okay, yeah, man. The Commanders are going to win 10 or 11 games this year. We're going to the playoffs. So take command. I hope the fan base echoes the same sentiments. No pun intended. Trying to get some rings. (laughs) Deuces.